With phase one of the Big Ten hockey season currently underway, we're here to preview Penn State's season and what the team needs to do to replicate last year's success. Welcome to another edition of Penn State Sports Night. I'm Jacob Charis, and I'm joined by Chris Lemo and Lexi Lideline. The Nittany Lions take on the Minnesota Golden Gophers to start their season. Penn State is looking to defend its Big Ten regular season title after the program won its first ever last season. However, Penn State lost 12 players, including longtime goaltender Peyton Jones. This is the biggest question for the Nittany Lions heading into the season. Can new starter Oscar Audio be a reliable number one goaltender? Well, you know, I have to say, th this is my big issue. Guy Gadowski is a great coach, don't get me wrong. But the problem was is he didn't give Oscar enough of a chance last year while Peyton Jones was still here. He started five or four games, and only one of them was in conference. And, like, look, conference games are a lot different. It's, it's one thing to go up against, you know, Sacred Heart or Alaska Fairbanks. It's another animal to go up against a Michigan or an Ohio State. Luckily, he won't have to go on the road, really, you know, with all the fan noise, because obviously that can be a big impact for a young goaltender. But he's still going to have a tough time breaking in. I, I expect it's going to be a little rocky to start it off. But he definitely has talent. The question for me this year will be, will Guy Godowski finally transition into a two-goal, a two-goalie uh, tandem there with Liam Solier, who just came in? He struggled last year with some injuries up in the BCHL in Canada, but the year before that, he was actually one of the junior goaltenders of the year in the CCHL. So he has a lot of talent as well. I think it's going to take some time getting these guys comfortable and adjusted but once they do I think they'll be pretty good yeah I agree with you they definitely didn't play Oscar audio as much as they should have he got like you said only four starts in a game five appearances went two one and one which is pretty good um, had two shutouts but his 0 0.930 save percentage was only based on that amount of games Liam held a 0 0.910 save percentage throughout the whole season so I think like he's really gonna have to step up and as you said Liam Sawyer struggled but He's been doing really well, like you said, and I'm really excited to see what opportunities Guy Gadowski will give Oscar Audio and if he will give any to Liam as well. But yeah, Oscar is definitely going to have to step up this year. Look, goaltending is not going to be Peyton Jones level. We know that. It just has to be a little bit above average in order to remain competitive in the Big Ten. Now moving to the back end, Penn State's defense was not very good last season. Poor breakouts and puck management in the D zone cost the Nittany Lions a lot. Big Ten Player of the Year Cole Holtz signed a two-year entry-level contract with the Los Angeles Kings, which leaves a void next to Paul DeNaples. Who do you think lines up next to DeNaples on that first pair? Well, I think it's got to be between Alex Stevens, Evan Bell, and Clayton Phillips. But I'm going to give it to Clayton Phillips. I mean, he actually transferred from Minnesota, funny fact. But I think he had the best season last year out of Bell and Stevens. He played the most games. He had the most points. Um, I think he's really strong. He's a stronger skater than Cole Holtz. Um, Cole Holtz did score a lot of goals, so Phillips is going to have to live up to that. But I think him and DeNaples will make a really good pair. Um, not that Bell and Stevens won't, but I think they are the more experienced pair. And they will do better against the Minnesotas, the Michigans, the Ohio States. You know, Guy Gadowski always likes to stack his leading lineups. So I think Phillips and DeNaples will definitely be a good pair to work together and will really show what Penn State's defense can do. Yeah, I mean, Clayton Phillips, to me, he, he is really fast. He's faster than, than Cole Holtz and kind of has that, like, Eric Carlson-esque stride to him, not to say that he'll have the NHL career that Eric Carlson has had, but he's really fast. And to me, sure, he may not offer the same offensive upside that Cole Holtz has, but at the end of the day, if he could be a better defender, then that's still a net plus for this team. Defensively, though, besides those two, it's going to be interesting. I think the, he's not going to be on the top, uh, the top pairing here, but Christian Berger will be interesting because Guy Godowski definitely knows that family well, of course, with Chase Berger being here for four years. So it wouldn't surprise me. I, I think he could fit in the second or third pairing, Christian Berger, because I think Guy Godowski will kind of be a little bit more willing to give him some responsibility. But as far as the top pairing, it's definitely Pauly D there, Paul DeNaples, and Clayton Phillips. Yeah, I think Eric Carlson of the Sharks is an excellent comparison. I think defense, I think Guy Godowski really has to focus on defense more because of the amount of forward talent that they lost. So that's going to be interesting for sure. And 
Phillips is good in those tight areas like Eric Carlson. Penn State will be without many of its top forwards from last season. The Nittany Lions are an offensive team that loves to get every single puck to the net. Without players like Nate Susies and Evan Barrett to lead the offense, is this a concern going into the season, and who needs to step up the most? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a concern, especially at center. Um, I mean, look, it's, it's no secret they're not going to be able to comp- or replace Evan Barrett, guys like that. Liam Folks, I mean, every time, I mean, he just demolished Wisconsin every single time they played. Guys like that, Nate Seuss, Dr. Seuss, I mean, he just, he always produced. I mean, he seems like he was always clutch. That's going to be a problem, uh, replacing those guys. Limoges still being here is a big plus. I was a little worried he le- he'd leave, but he did have a bit of a down year last year. But it's going to be up to my man, Arnie Telvidi. And he he definitely has more in the tank. He had six goals, 13 assists. But let me tell you, there's so much more there. He His speed, just between his freshman and sophomore year, definitely it went to another level. And I, I see now what the devil saw in him, picking him. And I think... He's going to have a big year. I think he has to have a big year. For me, I mean, I think he has to average a point a game for this team to click. But the top line is going to be really good, actually. I mean, not like last year, but still good because of Limoges. And then Doherty, the um, the grad student from Maine, he had a big year. He was top 10, I believe, in points in the Hockey East last year. So for me, those guys will be able to compete. The question is all the freshmen down the lineup in the bottom six. They got a lot of guys like uh, Xander Lampa, Christian Sarlo, who really had great years in the USHL last year, but now are going to be presented with a whole another physical challenge, stepping up to some of these guys that are much bigger than them and have much more college experience for them. So in, in short, really, the, the top of the lineup will be good. The bottom of the lineup, it will take some time for them to get some experience. I agree. Losing Susie's folks, Byro even, too. They were all key players in the Nittany Lions offense for and centers. So I think Limo is going to have to step up even more. I disagree with you. I think he had a great year last year with 103 points. Um, Arne, coming back last year after his knee injury the previous year, had a great year. I'm really excited to see how sophomore the Connors do, Connor McEachern and Connor McManaman. I'm really excited to see how they do. I think Sam Sternshine won't get as much playing time as we would like him to have. I don't think Guy Gadowski really trusts him all that much, which is sad to say because I think he's really good. I think he could be a little more nitty gritty and go after more pucks like Brent and Nibiro did. But I'm really excited to see how those two sophomores do and how Limo as a captain really leads this forward and center's lineups. Yeah, you know, I actually like that you mentioned that, the grittiness about Sternshine because without Pavlichev, they're going to miss that kind of enforcer type of role. Sam's not that, but he does bring a little bit more of an edge to his game. Same with a guy like Tyler Gratton, who will probably be in and out of the lineup. He he didn't produce a lot of offense, but he was able to produce that kind of grittiness that this team might lack without an Evan Barrett and uh, Nikita Pavlichev there. Yeah, I agree with you guys. I think for Arne Talvitia, I think he needs to get, with the shortened season, at least let's say 15 goals, which is like a 30-goal season in the NHL, an 82-game season. So now that we've gotten through the team, where do each of you see the Nittany Lions finishing in the Big Ten standings? I think this year Penn State's going to be fifth, and let me tell you why. Michigan, I don't think they really lost anybody this year. I think they're undeniably going to be number one. Minnesota, they're a young, hard, fast team. I think they had a great second half of their season last year. COVID sadly ruined that, but... I think we can look to see them at number two. Ohio State with APAP and Napier, I think that will guarantee them number three. Wisconsin, I was kind of back and forth between them and Penn State, but I think they will prevail. Penn State, they got a young team. I think they really have to see how they're going to do in the beginning series, and that will project how they're going to do in the future. Notre Dame, with the loss of Cale Morris, it's going to drop them really low in the Big Ten. I mean, he was really one of the most important players of that team. So I think they're really going to have to rebuild in the goalie position as well as us. And Michigan State losing Letheman and Kodorenko. Now they have DeRitter. I think they're going to be seventh. They're not as strong as, say, Notre Dame was. So I'm going to put them at seventh. Yeah, you know, this is definitely a rebuilding year uh, for Penn State. And I think the big thing going forward is you're going to have to compete with Michigan on the recruiting trail. Michigan just keeps cranking out 
top, you know, first round, second round draft picks. Next year they have three guys already committed that they just signed that are probably going to go in the top 15 in the NHL draft. So the pipeline keeps building out there in Ann Arbor. That's going to be a problem going forward. They, like you said, they really didn't lose anybody. I think they're a top 10 team right now in all of college hockey. I definitely have them winning the Big Ten. Minnesota is what I would like to see Penn State be going forward. And that they were young last year. They had a tough first half. Second half, their young guys clicked. They got going. And then this year, I expect big things from them. Ohio State, they got a couple guys back. Uh, I know Tanner Lazinski is gone, but Gustav Westland's a good scorer there. They'll be okay. And, of course, Napier in net. They'll be strong there. Uh, Wisconsin, Cole Caulfield coming back was a big get for them. That's why I have them over Penn State. I think that was really the big difference maker. Penn State at fifth, you know, like I said, it's, it's a rebuilding year. And to open up, they got four of six against those top two teams. That, you know, that's why I think they're going to get off to a slow start. Notre Dame, I just don't think they have the scoring to compete with any of the top tier teams. And Michigan State, they had kind of a Cinderella run last year, but they're done now. I think they're back to the basement. Yeah, I agree with you guys. I think for Penn State, center depth, like Chris said earlier, is a major concern. And Michigan is just unstoppable. Owen Power is a potential number one overall pick in this, in this upcoming draft. So we're going to see how Penn State comes out against Minnesota on Thursday and Friday. And if your predictions hold true for the rest of the season, that will do it for this edition of Penn State Sports Night. For Lexi Lodline and Chris Lemo, I'm Jacob Charis, and have a good night. Thank you for watching this edition of Penn State Sports Night. If you're a fan of our content, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more clips. Also, follow us on Twitter at PSSN TV and on Instagram at PSU Sports Night to keep up with all the action. For all my colleagues, we are Penn State Sports Night.